What's up everybody, that engine guy here. Today, we are going to be building a nitrous 383 stroker, good old LS1. This engine block has already been parallel CNC surfaced in our Rottler machine. Okay, fast forward a little bit and I have the aluminum LS1 set up, jigged up in our Rottler F65. The big advantage with this machine is most other shops, when they surface your deck, they put a, where's one, here we go. They put a little dial indicator like so under their mill head and they put your block on the machine. This is really loose, hold on. Anyways, and they will square up the mill head to the block, which is fine. However, you don't know if that block is actually true to the mains and the cam, right? So this being a 90 degree V8, these angles, the surface needs to be parallel to the origin, the main and the rut and the cam. So this machine's badass because like, here's an example. It has these rings that are super precision made and these rings will fit inside the cam tunnel and inside the main. And then we've also got two precision ground bars that go through the block and go into this 90 degree fixture plate. And this gives you a true blueprint of the engine. So now when I mill it, if for some reason this block is warped over the years, it wasn't cut straight at the factory. This will correct everything and true it completely up. Okay, now both sides are parallel surface to each other. I'm gonna take the block off the rottler, blow all the aluminum out of it, because next we're going into the cylinder hone where we're gonna final size the board diameters to correctly fit the new forged pistons. Okay, moving along. The block is now loaded up in the hone. I have dual torque plates on each side, as you can see. All of the bolts the main caps and the head bolts are all totally torqued to spec. This, all the torque that's now is applying on the engine has distorted the bores. So we're gonna hone it distorted and we're gonna hone it straight with our hones, with our diamonds. That way, whenever this engine is reassembled and all the stress is put back on it from all these fasteners, the cylinders will be pulled back straight. my Rottler hone, I finished it with plateau brushes, which gives us just an unreal slick surface finish. The rings break in really quick, really quick. Everything's super clean. This is actually the old engine block out of my C5 that spun a rod bearing in cylinder number six. And a good local friend of mine is going to have me build a 3D stroker for him. So I'm starting to get parts lined out. We're doing our Smetting 6125 H beam rods, ARP bolts on top of, or underneath, some Summit Pro LS LS1 Power Rider pistons. Got a standard friction ring pack, Napier second. Napier second ring means there's a hook right there. You can just kind of make it out. And that hook is gonna literally, its purpose is to scrape the oil off the bores. And then we have a gas nitrided steel top ring which we're going to also gap these for up to a 300 shot for this motor. He wants to make about 750 wheel horsepower, which should be doable. Should be pretty easy. So first things first, pop the new cam bearings in. We'll check main bearing clearance, check rod bearing clearance. We're also using a Smetting four inch stroke 4340 forged steel crankshaft, solid unit. I also use those and these rods on my upcoming engine to replace this one and my C5, which should be coming out after this videos. So yeah, let's get to work. LS engines have a pretty common problem of tearing up cam bearings. So anytime I'm doing a fresh build and I have the motor out of the vehicle, 
I always upgrade everybody to these Durabond coated bearings. I've never had a single issue with these. And even after tearing the motor down after 50,000, 60,000 miles, they look brand new. So I'm gonna get those pressed into the block and then we'll stick the camshaft in, make sure everything's perfectly straight and super healthy. So old school Chevys and engines, the cam bearing oiling hole is straight down vertically in the engine block. So it's super easy to line up the cam bearing oiling hole with the block however LS which is an upgrade they moved it a little bit so I always just take a blue marker and mark right in the middle of where that oil galley is in the engine block that way when I press the cam bearings in I have a pretty good target to hit actually let me get this let me show you what I mean so the oil hole is way up here at this angle and so you can't look straight down to shoot it into these holes. So what I'll do is I'll get my tool and I'll line up that hole with that blue stripe. That way I know the hole is lined up with the galley. All right, next time to check bearing clearance. We're gonna add our King coated race bearings into this motor. Torque everything down to spec. And then we'll check our main bearing clearance. And I really like these King bearings. They are just unbelievably tough. This stuff goes a long way, so you really don't need a lot. going to get all over the place in those threads. Okay, these bearing clearances are perfect. I, For a combination like this, I wanted to target like 2.5 to 2.7 thou or so, and we are all over that. So I'm gonna pop these caps back off, give the cylinder bores a good wash, get everything nice and clean, and then we'll install the crankshaft, gap rings, check rod bearing clearance, and finish this puppy up. Okay, currently we have 12 thou gap on all these steel rings. My target is 27 to 28 thousandths. So this guy can safely hit it with a 300 shot if he wants to and really get partying. So I need to take 15 thou off the gap and we'll come back and check. Okay, back after gapping all these. Let's see what we've got now. Oh yeah. Right on the money. 27 is just slightly falls into place with a tiny bit of pressure. Cool. So these are done. On to the second ring. 
trying to get a good shot to show you that hook right there. It's kind of tricky. There, you can kind of make it out. Super cool. That's called a napier second. That's how I think it's pronounced. Okay, right now I've got a 10 thousandths gap. Again, 27.5 is our target, so I'm gonna open her up. 17 thou. Okay, I didn't hit record, but second ring gap is also set at 27.5. So all the rings are good, now it's on to rod bearings. And after that, this thing gets assembled. All right, rod bearing's perfect. Got about two, three, two, five rock across, bleh, across the board. Go ahead and crack these caps loose, hang the ring pack, give her a final inspection and we'll stuff it. I used the driven break-in oil to lubricate the cylinder walls so the rings have a really nice surface or have a really nice oil to start their break-in process on.
Okay, that's a wrap. Got the 383 assembled, everything is looking fabulous. This thing is gonna be an absolute ripper. Next, all I've really got left to do is just measure the deck height so we can get the correct thickness head gaskets ordered for this guy. And then I think he's gonna bring me the cylinder heads to get them milled to get us up to around 11 and a half to one compression. So. I am excited to see this thing ripping and that's all I've got for you today.